Very excited to have you drawing along with me today. Thanks for joining in. I'm Glenn. You're looking at the beautiful grounds of Rayton Girls School in Kew, Victoria. And here's a big hello to the Year 4 5 girls in Mr Doyle's STEM class. Fantastic. Here's your challenge for today. Design a playground with mainly cubes and cylinders. Now the playground you're looking at is the design being used as inspiration. Thanks for sending that in girls. Okay, heads up girls, this is the hardest playground draw I've ever tried. So I'm going to break it down into two tutorials for you. In the first one, we'll be using cubes and cylinders to construct the core structure. It will be mainly three towers all joined together at the corners as you see on your screen and it will have some massive slides. We're going twice as high as these. And in the following tutorial, we'll add all of the design elements that bring your design to life and make it fun for the end user. Here's a sneak peek ahead at tutorial two, showing you an example of the kind of elements you could add into your design. Which color do you think we need to draw with today? I think it'll be the Wrighton school color blue. Just a note, try to avoid using dark lines. They're hard to erase. To draw light lines, hold your pencil more towards the end, just enough pressure to run along the ruler. Practice drawing some light lines. Next measure 21 centimeters from that edge of the paper across and place a mark. Repeat the same thing at the bottom and then join those two marks together using a light line. Glad you were listening. Hold your pencil right at the end. Good. Now we're going to measure up five centimeters and place another mark. Here's our starting point. Place the point of the splat and make sure the splat is straight up and down. Now we're going to trace from those two little notches down and around. Same on the other side, down and around. When tracing the middle slot, run your pencil along one side if you can. Great. This becomes my new starting point and I'm repeating those same five lines all over again. From the blip down and around, Oh, I've forgotten to draw the center one. No worries. Let's pop that back and trace that one in. Let's draw a third cube. There's my starting point. Again, from the blips around, we have five lines to draw in. Can you guess what I'm going to do next? Right, we're going to start from there. And one more cube will give us a tower, which is four cubes high. Remember, these are just guidelines. It's okay if they're a little wobbly at this stage. We get to fix them up with a ruler later on. So just keep pushing on. Now at the top, I'm only tracing two lines and it's quite okay to have some gaps in my guidelines at this stage. You're going to want to watch this closely, rotate the splat and then line up the corner of the splat with that corner in your drawing. Line up the edge as well to make sure it's straight up and down and then mark in the far two edges. Cool. You're doing really well. We're up to the second tower. Find that point and match it with your splat. You'll also need to make sure the sides are lined up or your splat's vertical. That line's already drawn in, so I've only got four more to draw. Let's have a look. We slide it up. And then remember on the other tower, we came to a new starting point and then we have four lines to draw in because the one on the right hand side is already drawn for us. Great, that's my second cube. Same again. And now I'm just working my way up. If your drawing doesn't look like the person beside you, then ask them for some help or ask your teacher for some help. It's really good to get the fundamental right here because it's going to be the basis of everything we build on top of it. If you're like me, you'll need a few practices to get it right. Here's how to get started on the right hand tower. We're matching that point, making sure the splat's vertical, and we're starting off with four lines. This time, the line on the left hand side edge is already drawn in for us. Let's slide up. Great, it looks like you've totally nailed it. So watch as I speed up the right hand tower.
My practice drawing shows that our next step will be to design the slides that wrap around the towers. But wait, we need to draw in some legs. Here's how. From that point, measure down two centimeters and place a mark. I'm doing the same thing at each of the corners. Whoop, missed a corner there. Down two centimeters. Let's finish off these other feet. I've drawn some cylinders onto some blue post-it note just to help me plan out the slide. That's where I'm going to start. And let's think about the finish. That's a short cylinder, but what angle is it? Remember this, if you ever want a cylinder that's level with the ground, then you simply need to line it up with the splat angle. It's called an isometric angle. Great. Now, um, I think I'll head down first. The next part of the slide drops down and I need to give myself some more room there. Check the angle. Good. And the final part of the slide, I think it will continue on that angle. Hey, wouldn't it be good if you could have a slide that let you go from one cylinder and jump into the next? Oop, let me turn that around. Notice how the open sections are all facing towards you. Next, we're drawing in the beginning of the slide. So with your splat in that position, draw just half an ellipse. The ellipse is like the oval shape. That saves a lot of erasing later. Place a ruler against that, and I'm going to put a mark to show you how far I want you to slide all the way across. There we go. Now we're going to mark in another half an ellipse. Great, now we need to connect the top and the bottom of the ellipses together. We've drawn the entry to the slide. Now let's draw the exit cylinder. Check you're holding your splat straight up and down. Slide it down to around this area. Draw a full ellipse at the opening and then using your ruler, slide the splat in that direction. We're drawing a half ellipse at the back, always a half ellipse at the back of a cylinder. Join the top and bottom and we are ready for the next step. We're going to join the two cylinders together, but first let's erase some of those lines that we know will um, just get in the way later. So with those gone, using a rule, connect those two points of your cylinders. It seems like a sharp join at the moment, but we'll smooth it off, we'll round it later. And from that point, come all the way up to there. Nice. Now that would be a bit of a hard bump, so let's round that off, as well as the inside, just a little curve. Notice the way I use the pencil really lightly, and when I'm happy with how it looks, then I come back, press a little to harder, and darken in or firm in the line. Adding a human figure to your drawing is important because not only does it give your drawing life and show the users, but it also shows scale or how big the slide is compared to a person. Here's an option just for the advanced or the older drawers. Put your pencil on the top of that ellipse and swing the bottom around to a new position. We're changing the shape of the exit of the slide just for something different an isometric line at the bottom, and then blend in the side to meet the line. Now you could design whatever shape you want for the exit of yours, or you can copy mine. It's going to need something to rest on the ground, so I'm drawing a little foot on the bottom. Let's take that one out. Let me show you something. Here's how to draw a cylinder on any angle. On a scrap piece of paper, draw a line. I'm using the splat angle. Extend it to however long you want your cylinder. Imagine a mark above and below that ellipse. Well, that's what I'm going to line up with my center line. At the back, you only have half an ellipse, but at the front or opening of a cylinder, we draw in the full ellipse. And it's that easy. Now you just need to connect the two ellipses together. Great, so you could do that on any angle. We'll erase the center line that we no longer need. Now that we've drawn a slide out this way, let's try one going out in the other direction. Place the splat on the cube and draw in a left ellipse. I'd like to bring my cylinder out in this direction. 
So place the splat in that position and then remember use the opposite edge and slide away. Now I'm going to mark in a full ellipse. Complete the cylinder and then let's move on to the next section of slide. From that point I'm going to choose way down there. That's my next cylinder. So that's the center line and the cylinder after that is going to change direction. Remember I showed you how to draw a cylinder on a center line? Take those two marks, line up with your center line, half an ellipse at the far, and closer towards you, draw the full ellipse. Then join them up with a ruler. You're doing great, okay? Don't worry if there's a gap in between each of the cylinders because we round that off later. So at the far end, half an ellipse, slide along and draw the full ellipse. Your shape could be different to mine, just have some fun with it, experiment. Watch as I join those cylinders together with some curved lines. It's a large curve on the outside and a smaller curve on the inside. Remove those lines that you don't need anymore. I'm redrawing in a few of my joins because I think they look really cool. So same as drawing your cylinders, line up with your center line and with a sharp pencil just a fine join. You could do that at the end of the cylinders or in the middle of the cylinders. Now I'm pressing a little harder and I'm drawing in my final design. Watch this. I'm going to erase just the end of that cylinder because we're going to make it turn all the way around and duck in behind the tower. Start with a little curve like that and then at the bottom come around but notice how the line's getting closer and closer to the little curve. When you're happy with that come back and darken it in. Notice it slopes downwards just there. So at the bottom you'll actually see a little bit of the slide coming down from behind. Let's mark that in with a ruler. Great, so that's pretty much our slide. Once you learn the rules of how to construct these isometric drawings, you can draw anything. I could have the slide popping out on one of these sides, or even up here. What a shock that'd be. I think we'd need to design a pool or a trampoline at the bottom there. How cool. Now that you've finished drawing the core structure, Pop over to video 2 and let's get started on the design detail.